So, am I the only one who got frustrated and started questioning why the heck am I doing this halfway through Fontaine Archon Quest Act 3? Because oh boy, what a boring sequence of events that particular act was. Which is ironic because in my opinion, the first two acts were so engaging to the point that I even made a breakdown of what I liked from the first act in a previous video. But then we got Act 3, where we basically woke up, worked in the production zone, had lunch, worked some more, and went to sleep repeatedly. Of course, with some variations of slacking off and doing investigations in between, but most of the time, it's the same boring repetitive task. And now you might be wondering if you even click on the right video. Why am I even talking about Act 3 when Frina was barely there throughout? What's even the connection? Well. The connection lies in the description of the Hydro Gemstone which would make a lot of sense once you read it with the prophecy and Frina's job as a celebrity archon in mind. It is crack theory time! Surely not to be taken as fact until proven otherwise, it's simply my copium analysis as to why Act 3 even existed in the first place, sticking out like a sore thumb among the well-written and well-paced act of Mountain Archon Quest. I mean, surely it's meant to serve a bigger purpose than just a snooze fest, right? As always, References will be in the description below and I invite you to share your thoughts on this crack theory in the comment section below. Now, let's get to it. While writing this script, I questioned myself if a recap section of the quest was really necessary. We all knew how it went, right? Child disappeared in the fortress of Merapit, and because he was pressured by the knave, Nuvilet asked us to go there and investigate. Then we went to prison, met the duke, met the twins, learned that prison life was not that bad because every day you got a free meal. But he evaluated the first statement because apparently the free meal was RNG, investigated Charles' disappearance, worked in the production zone, investigated some more, worked some more. That's basically it. We went to prison to investigate Charles' disappearance. That's the whole premise of the story. Very straightforward, very simple, very much could fit in as a sub-quest in one act instead of being a standalone act on its own. So, why did it get its own act? To understand this, let's take a look at the description of the Hydro Gemstone. The description goes like this. My ideals have no stains. I must correct you. People here bear no sins in the eyes of the gods. Only laws and a tribunal can judge someone. They can judge even me. So praise my magnificence and purity. Now, as we all know, the description of a gemstone reflects the Archon's ideals. Animal gemstone is Venti's wish for Monsta to live a life free of anyone's dictation, including even the Archon. Geo gemstone is Zhongli's promise of a prosperous land and how it ties down with contracts. Electro gemstone is about Ace's promise of an unchanging eternity for Inazuman and a reference to the puppet. Dendro gemstone is, well, isn't that basically Nahida's dream as depicted in her character teaser? As for Hydro Gemstone, while I still have some conflicting ideas on the first and last part, the middle part is pretty clear. It explains why Fontaine holds trial after trial. The Hydro Archon wants to prove and show to everyone that Fontaines are innocent. People here bear no sins, she said, because it is only laws in the tribunal that can judge the people, not some prophecy of old, and she must correct everyone who believes otherwise. Which appears to be pointless, really, because apparently the water level in Fontaine continues to rise as mentioned by the twins, and according to Nuvilet's character details, every last Fontanian is guilty. Given enough time, judgment and doom will one day fall upon them. And yes, as we seen in Act 4, that day was yesterday, and only because Nuvilet overruled that sentence that Fontaine was not already a pool of dissolving Fontanians. So, despite all that, why does Furina firmly believe that all she needs to do is to continue as she is, to hold trial after trial for Fontaine to be saved? Because that is the thing that she needs to do in order to achieve her objective. Remember when we were in the fortress of Merapit and sometime during the investigation, one of these stage objective windows would pop up? It's basically a to-do list and it's clearly stated that we must complete these objectives in order to advance the story. See, that's really what happened, right? We got these objectives and we were basically just going through the motions of going to work, having lunch, investigating, going to sleep, and repeat. Sometimes we didn't even have to walk around, we were simply teleported to the next scene. I remember asking myself, is there like a hidden option that I have to choose in order to escape this loop? Because it was so, so boring. 
There was even a point where Paimon asked what I would like to do and presented me with three options, but then I chose the third one and MC proceeded to decline, almost as if I didn't have a free will, as if everything was already scripted and I just had to choose accordingly to fulfill my role in the story. Of course, eventually the cycle broke and that was only after I completed all of the objectives, which was after a solid one hour of playthrough. Only then the story would move forward, which was us gaining the clues and figuring out where child disappeared to and how. I think you can already guess where I'm going with this. Act 3 of Fontaine Archon Quest serves as an analogy to Furina's life bound to her duty as a celebrity Archon. It was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? While we were stuck in the quest for only one hour until we completed the objective, Furina is still stuck in hers. And so, what's the equivalent of the to-do list, you might ask? One, it is for her to continue being the flamboyant celebrity archon that she is, and two, to hold trial after trial. And just like our to-do list in the prison, this task given to her do serve a bigger purpose. As we saw in Act 1, when Frina appeared and put up this extravagant welcome for the Traveler and Paimon, everybody cheered on her. They enjoyed the performance she put on, and it showed that she's indeed loved by the people. Or should I say, worshipped? Now, I don't think it's ever confirmed what act of worship counts towards an Archon's power, but assuming it's whatever that is commonly done in the nation and it differs by nations, this could be the form of worship done in Fontaine. With every extravagant public appearance Brina does, the people's cheer fits to her Archon's power. Oh, and on a side note, there was this one part when Frina was welcoming us and she was saying this. My dear people, rich and poor, those with cup in hand and those with nothing at all, raise your glasses in celebration. If you don't have one, then just raise your hand and leave. And Travel was like, nobody here seems to be holding a glass though. <laughs> it seems funny at first, this child Archon being a Delulu, but hey, what if she was simply reciting her lines, you know? Cause she's just an actress and the whole welcoming spectacle was just a performance. Anyways, as for the trial that may seem pointless on the surface, it is known that the orators will harvest people's belief in justice and convert it into energy called indemnidium that can be used all around Fontaine. Now, either they've held that many trials or the amount produced in each trial is just massive, but Fontaine seems to have an abundance of this energy. Think about it. They've been using this energy to power things up all around Fontaine for many years, five centuries at the very least, considering Nouvellet has been the Udex since after the Cataclysm, yet Arlecchino said that Fontaine had a massive amount of indemnidium. To me, that sounds like of all the beliefs converted into power in the past five centuries, only 10% of it has been used up by the people, while the remaining 90% of it remains unused. In other words, Powering things up all around Fontaine was never the main purpose of the Indemnidium, and with that, all the trials held up to this point were not pointless. What is it for then? What are they gonna use this massive Indemnidium for? Well, for a start, the word Indemnidium derives from Indemnity, which means security or protection against a loss, and is synonymous with the word protection, among other words. Now, Nouvellet told us that restoring his true dragonhood power by making the Archon return the Gnosis to him was definitely out of the question, i.e. perhaps they had talked about it, Furina and Nouvellet, and had considered this before discarding the idea altogether. And no, Nouvellet's final ascension voice line is not proof that that would happen in 4.2. I mean, they literally locked most of Nouvellet's stories and some voice lines behind a quest, and you're telling me that they somehow did a noopsie and forgot to lock this one voice line? If anything, that's more of a red herring to me. Or as Father once said, Anything left unguarded is usually just bait. I mean, if that is all it takes to solve the prophecy, Furina handing over her noses to Nuvilet, restoring Nuvilet's dragonhood power, then why haven't they done so long before travel arrived in Fontaine? Why now? Because they're waiting for something, for the solution that they are going for, but it's just is a waiting game, and it's not as simple as, as just handing over and restoring the dragonhood power. <clears throat> Sorry, I got, I got a bit carried away there. Right, uh, this ties back to what Furina said to Alekino in defense of herself, right? Frina may not be able to see the true future right now, but as long as she diligently continues doing her to-do list, holding trial after trial, accumulating more indemnidium in the process, eventually, eventually they would have enough to save Fontaine. 
How could they do that, you may ask? Well, I don't know. Perhaps enough indemnidium would be so powerful it could cancel out the primordial seawater and suppress it for good? Maybe it would be some kind of bargaining power, you know? In exchange for the lives of Fontanians, the primordial seawater could take indemnidium instead. Or maybe it would be transferred to Furina to unlock her divine power and she would finally know what she was supposed to do with the prophecy to save her people. Is this a crack theory? Partly yes. I am coping, refusing to believe that Fontaine Archon Quest has a bad act. Act 3 was not bad, it was not boring. It was an analogy to show us just how repetitive and boring Frina's life could be as she's bound to the role that she must play in order to save Fontaine. Just as how we couldn't escape the quest before we completed all the objectives, there is no way for Frina to get out of hers. She's a prisoner in her own identity as the Hydro Archon. Perhaps this imprisonment is the curse that Arlequina was talking about, and perhaps that's what her cry in the Fontaine of Lucene means. Just how much longer she has to act this part before enough indemnidium is harvested. Well, that's it for me. Let me know what you think in the comment below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.